In a recent study conducted by Morez et al., it has been claimed that the genome of an Old Kingdom Egyptian found in Nuerat was 80% related to Neolithic Northwest Africans and 20% to Neolithic Mesopotamians. The research team consisted of archaeogeneticists, bioarchaeologists, anthropologists, and population geneticists. The forensic lead, Caroline Wilkinson, rendered this widely publicized approximation of his appearance. But is this a true likeness of the Nuerat man based on what we know? Let's review the study to see what was actually determined about the appearance of Nuerat man. Regarding Nuerat man's limb proportions, page 13 of the supplementary data reads, it was suggested that the black estimates are more representative of ancient Egyptians, the identified ancestry of the present individual notwithstanding. The results correspond overall with black stature estimates, but provide a tighter cluster of results that these authors maintain provide the best ancient Egyptian statures. The estimated height of 159.06 was within 2 mm of the black American mean, but over 4 cm outside the white American mean, meaning he was anthropomorphically more consistent with black Africans. Although a subsequent Cranid report clustered him via craniometric dental analysis with an ancient Palestinian man from Lachish, whose race we don't know, the CR6BIND database is notably sparse of any regional African samples for comparison, as noted by the authors who stated, Neither Neolithic North African nor other specific West Asian cranial samples are part of the Cran ID database for direct methodological comparison. The same was the case for a majority of Northeast, East, Central, Sahelian and Northwest African groups. The Cranid model works on a nearest neighbor analysis and with Africans vastly underrepresented, this result was expected. Conversely to these results, craniofacial analysis conducted by Caroline Wilkinson notes the following traits. The skull was dolichocephalic and exhibited a post depression. Although not exclusive to both of these cranial traits, individually are merely suggestive of black African ancestry. However, both of these traits in tandem become strongly indicative of black African ancestry. In his paper, Assessing Non-Metric Cranial Traits Currently Used in Forensic Determination of Ancestry, Hefner states, In this sample, African individuals expressed a post pragmatic depression of 40.0%, while the other groups, discussed below, displayed a depression in up to only 14.7% of the cases. Similarly, Wilkinson herself states of dolichocephalic skulls that they are common in ancient Egyptians and black African groups. Wilkinson continues, The square orbit suggested slight upturned fissures, laterally, triangular eyebrows and normal eyeball protrusion. Rectangular orbits are also strongly associated with African ancestry, as noted by the University of Sheffield. African skulls can have more rectangular shaped orbits when compared to European and Asian skulls. She continues, the nasal spine and nasal bones suggested an upturned nose with rounded alley, a concave dorsal ridge and rounded tip. These features once again although not exclusive to or of African ancestry, suggest he had a round soft nose with a depressed nose bridge. This is indicative of what we call a snub nose. Together, these phenotypic traits seem strongly indicative of a person of native African or black ancestry. The phenotype of Nuerat man was also predicted using his DNA. Page 11 of the study reads, the genotypes responsible for skin, hair, and eye color. Prediction were investigated using the Hyrisplex S system, using the imputed genotypes. Page 2 states, The Nuerat individual is predicted to have had brown eyes, brown hair, and skin pigmentation ranging from dark to black skin, with a lower probability of intermediate skin color. Exploration of the supplementary data confirms that he more likely possessed dark brown to black hair, and almost certainly dark brown eyes. Also, dark to black skin in Nuerat Man's case corresponds to types 5 and 6 of the Fitzpatrick scale, determining someone who would be dermatologically consistent with native African high melanin density. 
Taking all of these stated phenotypic indicators into account, we get a fuller picture of the appearance of Nuerat Man, and it seems to diverge from the publicized reconstruction. Wilkinson herself ignored not only her own observations, but also discarded the genetic confirmations of his hair, skin, and eyes, strangely stating, there was no evidence in relation to eye color, skin color, and hair color. Proving her approximation was not made in consideration of this vital data uncovered during the study that she herself was a part of. In respect of what we've discovered about his phenotype in the study, we have produced a reconstruction that acknowledges the morphological and anthropological data to approximate a forensic reconstruction more in line with what the data suggests. Which one looks like a more honest prediction of his appearance? For more in-depth studies and forensic analysis, consider supporting the Reconstructing Egypt book sale. The link is pinned in the comments.